Number 21, identify the intermolecular forces present in the following solids, and then we have ethanol, which is CH3CH2OH. Now, this compound is the compound that is drunk for anybody. Or is it drank? Drunk? Drinked? Let me know in the comments. But this, this, this compound is what people over 21 in the United States, could be different elsewhere, but over 21 in the United States, you are allowed to drink this compound. How fun is that? <laughs> anyway, let's find out what the intermolecular forces this compound has. Now, the easiest way to figure out what intermolecular forces a molecule or a covalent compound has is to draw out the compound. So draw the Lewis structure. It is one extra step, but in order to visualize it, it will be that much easier. And once you get good with your Lewis structures, you can kind of visualize what this is going on in your mind. And that's the, that's the, that's the stage we want to get at ultimately. But for now, I'm just going to put it up on the screen um, so that you can see it, you know, on the screen, obviously. But you can pause the video and try to write the Lewis structure here yourself. We have tons of Lewis structure uh, videos already on the channel that teach you how to draw it. So if you need a little assistance, you could always go back to those. But let's just see what we got. So CH3CH2OH. With organic molecules, molecules that are contained with carbon and hydrogen, you always want to draw them from left to right. They are written this way so that they guide you as to how to draw them. So the first thing I'm going to draw is a carbon. And that carbon is bound to three hydrogens. And remember, all hydrogens can only have a single bond. So single, single, single. And now this carbon has already three bonds. It wants four because it wants the octet. So it can only make a single bond with the next element, and that's a carbon. That carbon has two hydrogens. So one on top, one on the bottom. And it doesn't really matter where you put the hydrogens, just as long as you have the right placement. One extra bond, that's got to be to the oxygen. So O, which has a hydrogen. And then the oxygen should have the two lone pairs, because it needs the octet. And voila, what a beautiful compound. All right. So from here, we're going to list our intermolecular forces. Now remember, an intermolecular force is an attraction when you have multiple of these compounds. So these are not the forces that are going on within one compound. These are intermolecular forces, meaning that if I had two of these, what's the attraction between those two? And we start from the most basic and go all the way to the most uh, specific. So dispersion forces, nothing special about those. All molecules, all compounds, whether you're ionic, covalent, they all will have this force. This is like your instantaneous dipole force. So, of course, it's going to have dispersion. So that one is a gimme. So we definitely have dispersion forces here. Now let's move on to the next one, which is a dipole-dipole attraction. And we're getting more and more specific. Only polar covalent molecules will show this force. Now, remember, polar means that your molecule is asymmetrical. So we have to see some type of asymmetry or difference between the molecule as a whole. So basically, if I split this down the middle, and I guess the middle would be over here, right? If I split it down the middle, and it's perfectly fine and legal to split your molecule down the atom, I have a CH3 on the left and an OH on the right. That is totally not symmetrical. This would be classified as polar. And because of that, these, or this molecule, ethanol, would, why am I writing dispersion? This also would have dipole, dipole interactions. And just know that, you know, you could call it a dipole-dipole force. You could call it, um, you know, dipole-dipole attraction. It doesn't matter. Just the word dipole-dipole is the most important. And also, for dispersion, there's a lot of different words for dispersion forces. Van der Waals, London, um, they all mean the same thing. So I would just check with your teacher or professor what language they use. Finally, is the most specific uh, 
intermolecular force, and the most powerful is the hydrogen bond. Now, only molecules that have a hydrogen that is bound to a very, very, very electronegative element will have this type of intermolecular force. So HN, HO, or HF. And you could reverse them. So it could be NH, OH, and FH. So I'm scanning this molecule and I say, do I see an NH bond, an OH bond, or an FH bond? And there it is. Here I have an OH. As soon as you see that, this will be able to form hydrogen bonding or have a hydrogen bond. And those are all your three intermolecular forces. So this one has the three of them. That means that its boiling point is going to be pretty high and also its melting point. As you start collecting your intermolecular forces, your boiling point will increase. So we found it out. This one has all three of them. I don't like that. I think blue would be better. That's good. There we go. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Thanks for being part of this community. Let's keep learning. Always keep learning. And good luck studying. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And let's just keep going. All right? You guys got this. Proud of you guys. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.